Terry Duffy. Boy, perfect guest to have on, Terry, with your view into <laughs> the rates market. How, how problematic is the situation yeah. out of the U.K.? I don't know if it's problematic or not, sir. I just heard it myself as well. So, I, you know, I, I need to dig into it like everybody else and see what actually it's going to mean for them. But to have the, the U.K. central bank coming back into the market um, was not a big surprise, I think, by a lot of people. I think the real reaction will be, does that do something to the, the U.S. and the Fed? And they want to come back in and create some liquidity. They're looking for some stability somewhere, somehow, sir. I don't know how they're going to do it. The U.S. just made comments that they're going to take down their balance sheet. They're going to take, you know, real rates up to a, a certain level, four and a half, four point seven five, and then the, our market reacts, you know, dramatically off of what Andrew Bailey said over in the U.K. So, to be quite honest with you, I know this just happened, so I really need to dig into his comments more. No, I, I mean, I was just asking generally about what's happening in the U.K. In the U.K., I think the concern right now is that he wants them to re finish rebalancing by Friday, when the Bank of England is due to end its. It's bond buying. These central banks are in this position where, it, especially the U.K., it's needing to provide liquidity at a time where it's also needing to trim its balance sheet and raise rates to fight inflation. What's that doing to the markets? Well, we, we see what it's doing to the market. The market hates it. And um, so, listen, the market doesn't like any more of these surprises going on. And I think we're, we continue to see them at the 11th hour, and it's not healthy for the marketplace. But... You know, everybody wants to figure out how to fight inflation, and sometimes the best way to fight inflation of high prices is with high prices. So, you know, I think the Fed needs to kind of st take a st uh, more of a balanced approach towards this, and central bankers around the world need to take a more balanced approach to this. It seems to be a bit irrational going on. I, I don't have the ultimate answer for you, sir, other than I think that we need to take a, a better look at how we're approaching the central banks here, not only in the United States, but around the country. Well, what, what are you seeing in the U.S. rates market, Terry? Because there have been some concerns lately about the spillover that we're seeing from the U.K., not to mention what's happening with the Fed and whether, whether there's some signs of strain emerging and potentially liquidity problems. What do you see? Well, I, I, I don't. I think that right now every, the Fed knew exactly that it was going to create some liquidity issues when it said it was going to take down its balance sheet, as I said earlier, and the rates were going to go up. It's not like they didn't know that. They did it in 18, saw the movie, now we're here again. So I don't think they went into this blind. They knew there was going to be some liquidity issues. So I think what we're seeing is volatility, but we're not seeing dysfunction in the bond market. So I think that's actually a good thing. You know, you, you, you can, you're going to have volatility when you have free money for all these years and maybe potential moral hazards associated with that. And now all of a sudden we, we're in a situation that we're in today. So, you know, I don't think it's a horrible thing. I think that there's volatility, but I don't think there's dysfunction, sir. So again, I think that's, that's interesting. the way the markets work when it, you have these dramatic events. It, it's interesting. I, I mean, I'm, I'm hammering you on it because you have a bird's eye view. And, but also there's this, there's this feeling right now that, that, that the Fed and other central banks are going to break something. That's sort of the, the concern out there. <laughs> but that, that when they do break something, then they'll come in and rescue it. And I'm just wondering if you think we are seeing that, close to that, if there's validity to that theory. I, I don't. I don't think they're going to break something. I think they know exactly what they're doing. Listen, they've had plenty of opportunities. I've been a, a hawk on this for many years on your show and others saying that the Fed's had plenty of opportunity to take rates up when things are good, and now they didn't. So I, do I think they're going to break something? I mean, you guys talk a lot about hard landings and soft landings. It all got trillions of dollars of government money that went into the economy with nobody working, everybody want, fighting for the same products. I know I'm not saying anything novel or complex. We've all been talking about this, but nobody knows how to deal with it. So do I think they're going to break something? No, I think rates are going to go up. And when you think about it, the way they want it to come down is unemployment at 3.5. They want it to go away. So you look at all the politicians running for office, you don't see too many commercials about how they're going to create jobs anymore. So it is really crazy what's going on in the world today. And I think a lot of it has to do with the pandemic and set the market up the way it did. Yeah. What, I mean, obviously, high volumes are an uncertainty around the Fed is good for your business, Terry. Where, where are you seeing the most volumes? Is it in rates or foreign exchange or energy? I mean, it's all kind of really volatile right now. Across the, across the board. Across the board, sir. 36 percent up in futures, 46 percent up in options on futures, you know, year over year in September. It, it's just amazing uh, the way people need to continue to manage risk.